All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Free Market Prep. I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. Hopefully, you guys had an incredible day yesterday. Uh, good morning, Thorne. How you, how are you doing today, my friend? Hey, good morning, brother. How are you doing this? Uh, how are you doing, man? Watching these uh, PPI numbers just came out, so trying to see if things are going to get spicy. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. Spies, uh, even before these numbers, you could tell here the spies not, has not been having a great um, pre-market. Uh, down quite a bit today. So just interesting, man. Everything's going on today. Um, good morning, guys. Good morning. Let's get into while well, this develops. Let's get into some of the stuff we had yesterday because we had a really, really nice day yesterday, uh, starting here with um, uh, AMD, which is the one I traded. So if we go over to AMD, we'll look at yesterday's action. Here we are. I mean, just look how beautiful and clean that was. And we actually traded this live uh, with Andrew. Yes, I was on the mic with him. You can tell how beautiful this thing is. Very nice pop here. Got a little bit extended for a five minute. This, this is our five minute chart you can see here. Um, but nevertheless, it did give you a beautiful continuation. Got a little bit of uh, concern here above this 85.70, but it, it just kept going, guys. Look at the levels that we have here. 86.63, right to that. We also had 87.97, right to that as well. Again, took a while to get going. That almost looked like an hour and a half plus there. But uh, but trended real real nice. We also had Tesla um had a nice pop at the beginning, right off out of the gate, but didn't really give you a nice continuation after. All right, so it gave you a really nice move at the beginning. If you caught this early, that was great. And then it's just struggled to really get going after that into later parts of the day, hitting our level at 83, 183.68. So you see that there. Um, Nvidia was very similar to AMD, although I found AMD to be a little bit cleaner. Um, but if you look at them, they're very similar to each other. Coin, on the other hand, I mean, we had a very interesting pre-market action to the start of it. Um, at the market open, I just, I just struggled to find a good, um, a good entry on this. I just, I just struggled, man. So I didn't trade yesterday. Uh, AMD we already went over, and we also had Meta was another one that actually was really, really nice, guys. Beautiful pre-market activity. Uh, they continue into the market open a little bit of a pullback to the VWAP, almost below us, so a little bit hard to trust there. And then eventually gets right back up to the high of the day again. And just look how beautiful that thing traded. So a lot of really great, great stocks. And then we also had, if you remember, we have FRC just for entertainment purposes, man. And there's a reason why we stay away from this stock. Uh, dropped here, got halted. I mean, just back and forth and, and you know. We're a very wide range, by the way. This is like 47 to like 44, uh, 44, 50 there. Um, it's just very wide range and not a really good trading stock and very light volume. So um, today they're in play again. They got some volume. They're down 3.4. Just be very careful. These things are moving uh, very, very uh, aggressive. Um, Thor, what did you trade yesterday? How was your day? Uh, yesterday for me was actually um, pretty slow. Um, I, I got a couple of trades on the market um, via future um, early on and managed to yeah. hit goal. Um, nice. So and just kind of with the day in general, I had a webinar I did last night on uh, yeah. on you know trade evaluation, some other stuff there. So I actually took the uh, opportunity just to kind of cut it at just kind of a, a chill one and done day, and, and ended up getting a bunch of stuff done. So and I'm actually kind of in similar fashion I'm, I'm going to be watching the market today as well with the the ppi numbers that just you know came out which aren't really that you know interesting honestly i think they're kind of i mean the the feb retail sales x autos was like minus 0.1 you know and the retail sales were revised to like 3.2 percent up so i mean it's like not like anything awesome i don't think i don't know if it's anything like that either so it'll be interesting yeah. to see if we get a if we get a big response out of this or, you know, how the market kind of handles this news, you know, kind of being a little meh, but not being like bad per se. Right. Right. Yeah. Fully, fully agree with you there, my friend. Uh, we'll have to see how things shake out here. But even before this, I mean, the market has moved a lot this morning already, right? Uh, all the way to mm -hmm. seven o'clock. We, we're down uh, 1.8 on there. And if you look at the daily, um, you can see we were back towards the lows. We had uh, uh, two trading days ago. This would have been Monday. Um, so let's see. Let's see what happens. Very interesting action this morning. This is going to create a lot of volatility. Obviously, to the downside, if you look at our gap down list this morning, it's pretty extensive. There's, not, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can choose from. Yep. Um, so we will dive in and see what's happening there. These financial institutions are still you know, a big chunk mm -hmm. of the stuff on here. Uh, so you see FRC there. You see uh, even the big guys are getting a, a little bit of some action this morning. 
uh, West Fargo, Citigroup are on this uh, list today. And if we dive a little deeper there, you can see XPEP and some other tickers that we can, can look at. But a lot of banking uh, stuff on this list uh, this morning, including the major banks, which is very, very interesting. Um, all right. With that said, guys, let's take a look at overall market pulsing news, and then we'll come back and fine tune this list. Hey, everybody. Um, for those of you watching your charts right now, the market just managed to move down into the breakdown range area of the market. So we kind of need things to step up and defend here a little bit, or today's going to start to look really interesting again really quick. Um, we did have our consumer uh, price index come out, um, you know, slightly up. Uh, you know, I don't think it was anything unexpected. So um, it looks like the market kind of sold off into those numbers and anticipation so i'll be interested to see if we catch a bounce here i mean just because of the the uh the low area we find ourselves in um but we need to wait um right now if you're looking at es um the if you're looking at the uh, sorry i meant ppi it said see it said consumer price index on the sheet that i was holding i meant ppi um and uh but if you're looking at a book map uh to the to the downside, we really don't have a lot of orders loading in lower, especially on the ES. Um, so I'm, I'm not really thinking we go a whole lot lo lower unless something really changes. And we are starting to build some topside ladder. So maybe after we shake out for a little bit, maybe we can catch a bid here for a bit. Um, but as of right now, we're, it looks pretty balanced. So we're going to kind of have to wait and just see what happens. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, looking, looking a little interesting this morning, I'll probably be playing the market for the most part, one way or another, either an ETF or a future or something. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. This does look very interesting to say the least this morning. Um, all right, guys, let's dive into what we have here. Let's remove some of the stuff from yesterday. Control a control X gets rid of that. And, uh, let's start looking at what we have in here. We have two just gapping up this morning. It's going to be a M B I, which is, uh, up 26%, but not looking good at all. I mean, the volume is very light, 227,000. Also a stock sitting on the American Stock Exchange, which I'm not a big fan of actual tickers that are sitting in this uh, exchange. So I don't like this one. 5.5 uh, million shares flow. Again, just very loud on volume, even with this gap up. Also on top of that, recent IPO, just IPO'd a couple of days ago, based on what I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything before the six. So yeah, I was trying to pull news on it and I was like, I don't have anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you probably won't find right, right. So, um, yeah, we'll skip on this. Let's go to S. Uh, S is actually up four percent here. Another one that doesn't look great, man. This seen better days for sure, hanging around 50, uh, 30, and now here at 15. Um, but again, the volume is just not there, uh, very light on as far as uh, what they do on a regular basis. The last couple of days, we've seen an increase in volume, which is nice. Um, yesterday, and yeah. is this a bank? Sentinel uh, one uh, no. no S is S has earnings. Um, S oh, is one okay. Of our, S is one of our only um, is pr I think probably our only ticker we'll have on the list today that actually has earnings. Gotcha. Um, so so yeah, that's what's going on with good old S. All right. Yeah. So not not a whole lot there. We'll, we'll skip on that one. I just don't like what I'm seeing there. I think we'll find better things uh, in our list this morning. All right. Our, our our list here. If you look to the left here, you can see the sector that we are watching on our. On our gap down list and everything in the top for the most part is falling under finance right so a lot a lot of uh, uh tickers in in this deck this morning so um any any overall finance news that i missed besides you know the man is going on with these regional banks is there anything new that came out i know people are are up in arms about you know people saving certain uh, banks whatever but um anything else going on that that has come out recently or no what do you guys have Nothing. There's uh, a credit credit um, credit suite show uh, join the party. I mean, that's what some people are saying in the chat. I, I saw something with them, but I, I didn't really look into it, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll have to check. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's tons of these guys right here, guys. Uh, Scion, FCR. I mean, look at FCR, guys, dropping eight point five here. Um, this are not good. What's the ticket for for these guys? Uh, e EU. Is that it? No, that's not it. But let's find the tickers. Somebody said they're halted already. Ah, oh, that is not good. Um, TTE is down here, 5%. You have Key, you have Shell, you have a bunch of stuff. Um, but I'm interested in the big guys, man. Look at Citigroup here. They are down 5.2, so I like that. I'm gonna have I'm gonna put these guys on my list here. Um, because they can trade a little bit more stable. WFC is another one that I like as well. So I'm gonna put them on the secondary. Um, WFC. 
And then we'll look at Bank of America and JP Morgan. Uh, what's happening there? They're on this list too. Um, here's JP Morgan down 3.7. Man, JP Morgan does look really, really good uh, this morning. I like JP Morgan, probably the better one today. And then last but not least, the other big guy is going to be Bank of America. These regional banks I'm not too fond of. Um, I think they're just very sloppy with their trading. Uh, these are going to be a lot better, these uh, um, national banks. Bank of America also down with some good volume, guys. Three million uh, shares traded. Uh, I like that too. So, um, yeah, I can't have all of them on my main list. Obviously, you don't want that. I want to kind of spread the love around a little bit. I'm going to put in Bank of America as a secondary, and we'll see where we go uh, from there. So, yeah, that's looking good right now. Um, yeah, well, see, oh, there it is. So, so yeah, Credit Suisse uh, and uh, European banks in the same trouble as U.S. banks. Uh, that's not, it's not surprising, and that's kind of what um, people are concerned, like how many other banks are in the same situation, and we don't know about it yet, right? Or haven't got to the point where they have to, because um, FRC's issue was that they had to close out some of their bonds at a really, really big loss, right? And they just couldn't have enough time to uh, turn that into cash for people that were withdrawing their money. They kind of got a wind of it. So it became messy. I'm sure they're not the only banks, right? That's the top number, uh, the top uh, 16 bank, I think it was. They're not going to be the only bank in this situation. And, and that's the concern that people were having. Uh, and you're starting to see that kind of uh, uh, play out now. Now, it's going to be interesting what happens next because this bank is getting bailed out. So if other ones come out now, what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to bail those out too uh, here in the U.S.? What's going to happen then? So um, interesting stuff, my friends. Interesting stuff. Um, all right, let's take a look here. So as far as banks, I, I'm not going to watch the other guys. I mean, they're just brutal. FRC, if you're, if this is your type of stuff, FRC might be a one to watch, but it can move, guys. Be very, very careful. Um, all right, let's move on down to... What else we have that's not, I'm trying to look for stuff that's not banking here. We have Mara on deck. So coin, uh, you got some volume here on Mara. It was active yesterday pre-market. Uh, again, I, I did watch coin. I didn't see anything great. Look, like it got better later in the day, but not not currently uh, doing anything. Let's we go down. We were pretty good on that one. Yesterday in yeah. pre-market show, we were talking about how Bitcoin had already gone up to around 26,500. Uh, yeah. Right. And I was like saying we're right near this, you know, range where we really expect to see an algo response. We'd probably see some selling start happening here. And, and yesterday we ended up with an inverted hammer. So uh, so kind of nailed that one. But, uh, you, you know, Mara is probably going to be tied in with all of that now that it's made quite a rally and installed. I, I wouldn't I'd imagine these get kind of choppy here in a little bit. They don't sell yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. I think they go back to the way they've been trading. I mean, you had a big day on Monday, uh, a lot of volume yesterday. Uh, now we just might be going back to their normal trading activity. So we'll have to see. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm digging through this. Anything that's not uh, in the finance world here, we got Shopify is uh, down 3.5, a horrible volume right now. It's just not enough. Uh, we have Plug here as well, which... Um, very interesting daily, guys, as we're looking to lose this, uh, what is this, 11.60? That's the low from the last two days. It had a, had a really bad day yesterday selling off until they're gapping down another 3.6. Not a good look for plug. I'm not sure what's going on with these guys, but they have not been uh, doing so well. Very interesting as we're holding on to the low of uh, in December right there. So maybe that can become some support, but not looking so hot. Um, you know, I think plug could be a good possible. Uh, I would like it to be a little higher price, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, USB is on here. JP Morgan, we have uh, UPST for me. I don't like the way this thing trades. Upstar, um, so I'm going to skip on that one. What else we have? Carvana is uh, hanging around at $6. Uh, JD was um, was being talked about yesterday. I thought you guys threw this one out quite a bit. Um, but looking at it now, it, it didn't trade all that hard yesterday. So very tough trader. No surprise. Um, man, this looks like JD. Mile. Just, mm -hmm. just ain't as fun as he used to be. Uh-oh, it's that. Mm. This list, guys, is a mile long here. Um, here's Baba. Anything going on with Baba? I do like this one when it is in play. Ah, I like Baba today. It is down 3%, 460,000. And I like Baba when it's gapping down or up. Um, I don't like it when it's pretty much flat here. So this could be interesting. Um, and although it's not high volume as we're used to seeing, the pre-market activity does look nice, guys. Look at the drop here, back up, and then creating a new low now. I, I like this. I do like this. I like that we're los losing a level on the daily at 83. Uh, I'm going to put Baba on deck today. This could be one of the ones that does something fun for us this morning. Um, here's American Airlines. Also, uh, man, look at American Airlines the last couple of days. 
taking a nice little hit here. Um, so that is uh, maybe a possible. That is interesting. And that reminds me of United Airlines. I know they had the issue with the pilot hours and the contracts, and, and they're down, but now with a lot of volume this morning. All right, I'm going to stop here because this list is, feels like every time I scroll down, 10 more appear at the it's bottom. So, <laughs> yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. So uh, let's go ahead and stop here. Thor, is there anything that you love this morning? Um, as of right now, um, I would actually go with kind of a no. Um, most of what I'm seeing right now that is generically something I like to play um, is, is not, you know, is not quite looking like that right now. Um, the market's in play, so I will likely play the market in some capacity, either through like an ETF or through a future or something like that. Um, unless something really, really pops out, there are, you know, I mean, Tesla obviously always offers a couple of opportunities every day. Um, you can always kind of load that one up. Um, JD, although it's in like a weird spot, not looking great, you know, they've been starting to run lots of articles on, is it time to buy the worst performing NASDAQ stocks? And, you know, um, JD's kind of in a, in a, in a lower area and, you know, all of the gapping down, maybe, maybe some of these start to give us an opportunity. Like, you know, JD, for instance, has a strong buy analyst recommendation right now. So, you know, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see when some of these start to actually move. But as you saw yesterday, stocks like JD really underperform. Um, Apple um, got uh, just got called by the pivot bot recently. Um, so and I've noticed yesterday during our, our kind of our rally we had yesterday or, or we, we got a little bit back yesterday, the tech stocks really didn't seem to respond, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, Meta just kind of popped a little bit and flatted. Apple popped a little bit and flat, like everything really just kind of didn't do anything. So uh, maybe they were waiting for these numbers today. I'm not sure. So so the techs may or may not be interesting today. I'm I'm not sure. There's not a lot of volume there, but we're, we finally got enough to at least alert something like Apple. So maybe something happens on these, but I got yeah. no big just jump out at me. This is the fun of being outside of earnings season for us when we're looking for catalysts. You know, right now what's in what's in catalyst is the market in general, not necessarily yeah. any one specific ticker. So that that's what, you know, I've, we've had some people saying, man, I'm having a lot of trouble trading, you know, a ABC ticker. And, uh, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, we're a chop, you know, we're kind of in a stressed market right now. Lots of fear. No one, you know, no one's really buying, but no one's really selling either for the most part. So we're just kind of hanging out and, you know, just waiting for something. We all feel like that little kid from, you know, the cartoon Incredibles on the tricycle. that's just like, you know, like, what are you waiting for? And he's just like, I don't know, something incredible. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's where we're waiting on. We're waiting on that moment. Just, you know, something to pop off and give us a good time. It'll show up. It'll be here today. We'll find it. But yeah, as of yeah. right now, it's it's looking a little bland. It, it sure is, my friend, uh, when it comes to those type of moves. Let's take a look here, guys. Um, what do you guys like this morning? Let's look at our YouTube chat and also over on our members tab. Uh, AMD, NVIDIA. Yeah, let's look at AMD. It was really good yesterday. Um, I mean, look at this pop yesterday. It looks like the, the semis, right? AMD and also uh, NVIDIA. I agree with you there. A lot of the tech uh, companies were not doing uh, all that hot. Uh, but NVIDIA and AMD, the semis, at least these two were doing okay. Um, especially AMD. Um, looking at AMD now, let's start with that one. We're down 1.8 right now. We, I love the volume, a million shares traded. So that's good for us there. Um, I think we might get an opportunity, but I just don't know how explosive it's going to be. Um, so maybe more of a possible today. I think our play here with the banks is going to be a lot better this morning. I think this is where the action is. Um, this is where the focus is today, and we might get a, a better play there. But AMD, um, no, I'll move it up. You know why? Because this volume is is very significant for AMD. A million shares for AMD. Um, we haven't seen that on a regular basis in a long time. So I want I want to definitely watch that. And AMD's then AMD is in yeah. a really interesting spot on its chart too. Mm -hmm. um, AMD is right is the delineation line we would normally consider to be the breakout versus the range on AMD is like eighty five and three quarters, so like eighty five seventy five, and we're at eighty six bucks. So we're basically sitting right on the top, of the right on the bottom of the breakout range. So yeah. if the market decides to bounce today uh, and rebound a bit and get moving, AMD could be an opportunity for a solid breakout if it gets going. Right now, yeah. that being said, the order book on it looks a little weak. So, so it does not look like the market is ready for that. Um, but I mean, we, we're getting volume in this range. So if the market stuffs though, also kind of the same thing i just said but in reverse if the market starts to sell off hot, hard we're in a really good spot on amd 
um, to catch, yeah. you know, to catch a drop. So back into range. So it might be good just to hang on to AMD and watch this one because it might just it might provide an opportunity in either direction. But you yeah. have to be patient with it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. I like that. Uh, NVIDIA, on the other hand, it looks good now, but the market opened um, the price action. Again, very similar to AMD, but I feel like AMD was much better than NVIDIA yesterday. So I don't have a lot of space on my list already with the, the two banks you know, in here, which normally we don't watch, Citigroup and JP Morgan. So I'm just going to keep AMD for now. NVIDIA could be a great secondary one to look at if and AMD for some reason is not doing something great. Uh, my, you're giving us our Fredo. I mean, our, our my, you're giving us um, Microsoft. Let's take a look at Microsoft here. This is down 1.1. 1 .1. Um, yeah, it looks looks good for today. Uh, I just I have so many on my list already. I prefer AMD uh, this morning because um, they got the really explosive volume as far as a tech company overall. I mean, these guys are down 1.1, 1 .1, 414. Um, so not bad. I think it's going to get better at the market open. But uh, but yeah. yeah, Microsoft is also getting pegged as one of Motley Fool's two growth stocks to mm -hmm. hold for the next 10 years right oh. now. Yeah. So so <laughs> you, you may you may have a little you may have a little bit of rotation into this today. Yeah. If, if the market starts moving, especially as people start, you know, looking at it, oh, man, maybe I should. You know, we do have a we have a Microsoft, for, you know, has a pretty solid dividend. I mean, not really. I mean, it's like what, like one percent or something. But it's not a bad dividend for a tech stock. It's a great dividend. Yeah, for for a tech type stock, it's actually not bad. Um, but you got other most ones like most tech stocks don't have a dividend. Yeah, so. it's, they're hard, or at least they do. They're very low. Um, but you know, you can find other things like Coca Cola, Ko. Uh, what's the other one? Verizon actually has a great. I didn't notice how how good their dividends is. Usually, stocks that don't move a whole lot and don't trade very well have amazing dividends like KO and, and Verizon um, or two of the ones that I know of the top of my head here. Let's look at Meta. Meta's next. Um, let's see what's happening there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Chris, it's like 7.5. It's crazy on Verizon. Uh, Meta here. Uh, Meta had a good day yesterday. Right now they're moving sideways. I like the volume, right? So we're down 2%. Haven't done much in the last couple of minutes, which is okay. Many stocks are doing this exact same thing here. Just kind of going sideways after the drop in the pre-market. Um, might be a good one. Uh, I think a possible, a possible for now. I like the volume and 1.4 million shares traded so far. Uh, so I do like that one. Might might end up moving it up. Let's see how it goes here. Um, all right, so we have Meta Tesla is good, guys. T H M O. John is giving us T H M O. What is this one? Oh, this is a uh, it's a spicy one here. T H M O. What do we got going on? Thermo Look at this Genesis. thing, man. Oh, any awesome. news? Any news on this thermal uh, genesis? Oh. Um, not that I'm. Uh, this is a, a, a high flying risk one here. Let's put it here in our risky pile. Definitely in play, guys. Two point two million right now. Um, T H M O. But again, you have to know what you're doing with this ticker. Um, it is not for mm -hmm. uh, the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up a hundred. 40%. I love seeing stocks like that. Up 140% this morning, 2.5 million. I, mean, I had a really trade. high short float. Maybe it's just yeah. getting squeezed. Uh, what's the short float? THMO. Uh, what's the percentage? Yeah, I'm showing only 4.8. Um, oh, no. Not that bad. Not, not it looked bad. bigger because I, all I saw was a 753 outstanding. But ah, I, didn't, okay. I didn't yeah, do the yeah. percentage. Yeah, so... um. Oh, yeah, no. we'll see, guys. Be careful. Okay, That's one of these low flow stocks. Good, I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah, uh, and sometimes they don't have any news, which is the, the crazier part. Um, just be careful. Well, we can guys have on options, events. I mean, there there could be like some expiration cycle that I'm not aware of, or sometimes it's just you know you get too much gamma or something like that, and you know things just pop off. If someone comes in, scoops a whole bunch of it, and it triggers the algos, and then it goes crazy. So you never know what yeah. these things. Sometimes keep an eye on it, though. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Um, so guys, we'll put it here in our risky pile. Be very, very careful. Definitely in play this morning. All right. We got, we got a lot. We got a lot today. We got, um, two bank stocks here that are doing good. We have Baba, which Baba looking at the rest of the stuff, I might end up moving this down. Um, we have Tesla and we have AMD. We also have some really good possible oh, more is. banks. I found yeah. it. Thermogenesis oh, yeah. announced a rollout of a ready start suite for early stage cell and gene therapy companies. Okay. So they're, they made it so it's an it's related to an announcement so yeah we'll see man. it's not even we'll like see. a good announcement technically it's like we're ready to start yeah so, nothing has happened <laughs> but but people it, are know. just kind of starting to get yeah. in now that they're they're thinking maybe something's going to happen they're just starting to yeah. scoop some shares 
So I figured someone probably came in and bought a whole bunch of shares and that probably on this news and that probably triggered the algos to start grabbing. Yep. Yep. I, I agree. Um, uh, nope, not really. Uh, H I say, do I ever disagree? Nope. I don't disagree much. I'm, I'm, I'm I agree with uh, everything Thor says. He's a, uh, he's on point, man. Um, all right, let's take a look here. So we have um, a pretty good list so far. I don't think I can add anything else, but I want to take a look at Chip is giving us Rivian. Rivian, uh, let's see, Rivian this morning. Uh, Rivian, uh, what do we have here? Uh, no, yeah, you, you, you were right, Chip. I'm not going to like this as much just because today we have um, we we have better takers this morning, right? This thing has volume, though, 717,000. Uh, 1.8 uh, down this morning so far has been had a rough, rough day, man. Just look at the drop we're getting here. So I, I agree with Chip just to keep that. I agree going. Um, I don't like this one as much, but let's check your other one. Now, KOLD, KOLD, this one here, it's a little bit different because this is um, it's an ETF. So it depends on how you like your trading style. You can watch this one depending on how the overall sector is doing. I tend not to trade these, but um, you can you can definitely watch this depending on what you're looking to to do here. But um, just be careful. Very light on volume. Uh, sitting on the American Stock Exchange, usually these things would uh, sit there. I think there might be better things that move uh, slightly better for day trading. I don't. I wouldn't know what those tickers are. Um, but yeah, just be careful on how how you look yeah, to yeah, trade. Yeah, KOLD this is more of a swing trading instrument than a day. That's what I think. Instrument. Yeah, it it, it tends it tends to run um some pretty wild spreads at time you know it, it looks all fun and games right now it says 10 cents which for a 54 dollar stock is already a little wide um but yeah. if you look lower on the ladder you can see 20 cent and 30 cent gaps so but the price doesn't really move very far so that means it, it tends to run those gaps and then pull back and then retrace mm -hmm. uh, and you know if you're swing trading something so you want to swing trade you know maybe the strong you know big winter is supposed to come out so you want to grab some kold and you know because you know that more natty gas is going to get sold you know, right. you know, that's that, that, you know, over the next few weeks, maybe, you know, you can, you can even see like in uh, January, December through January, right? KLD went from, you know, 20 bucks to 70 bucks or something like that. I mean, it would have been a great swing trading in, um, in instrument, but look at the days. Uh, each one of the days as you get there individually stinks, like, yeah, you, you know, yeah. all through that entire, every single month going up until maybe like last month, every day was just this tiny little horrible to trade <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah. But it resulted over time in being quite the move, right? So this is what this is yeah. what we're talking about when we talk about swing trading instruments versus day trading instruments. Uh, KOL, yeah. KOLD more fits that. Yep, agree 100%. Uh, Ivo, uh, GOLD, this one here, let's see what we got going on. This is up 2.1. Uh, sa same thing here, man. I don't usually trade this one. Um, it's, it's not a great intraday trading ticker for me in the way it moves. Um, if you look at the stuff we trade, right, usually stuff with very high volume that I can really uh, read the price action. This is one of them that, although it might be trending, um, it's going to be tough for me to like find a five minute open range breakup on this. Right. Think of think of me trying to find a five minute open range breakup on GOLD. Right. That's not going to go very well. Now, for trending type plays, I think this can do very well. But look at the market open yesterday. Uh, and you had you had OK volume, right, compared to what they do. So it's just a tough ticker for my type of strategies, right? So that's my that's my take on, on this one. Uh, it'll be the same thing on the one we just looked at, right? The one, uh, what was that, uh, KOLD? Same thing. Finding a five-minute open range break on this is going to be extremely tough, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm not going to get no help from the level two. I'm not going to get no help from the volume. And that is a big problem uh, for me when I'm looking for that momentum time. And not just uh, a five-minute open range breakout. Any type of momentum play where you want to find something explosive uh, it's going to be hard to do with these type of tickers, right? So, and and that's what the issue is at times. Um, nothing worse than getting into a trade and sitting there and waiting to it to do something, and it's twenty minutes in, and you're like, "What the heck is happening? Nothing is moving." So, yeah. that, getting that's liquidity tight is the worst, especially if yeah. you have a small to medium size account. You really don't want to get too heavy into your leverage, and you're just sitting there biting your fingernails waiting for something to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, I think we're pretty much set. Um, looking at both chats, I don't see anything else. Ben, you're giving us AI. Let's take a look at AI. Is the fun over? Yeah, the fun is over in AI. The fun um, is over. The AI has been, over. yeah, it's it's been just hanging here. I'm surprised it hasn't lost this level yet, though. It's, you know, it's just kind of hanging out here at 20. Um, I won't be surprised. Let's give it another uh, th three weeks tops. <laughs> I think we're back at 1250. Right. 
But that is not no financial advice at all, my friends. But we'll bet twelve fifty on this for in the ne next three weeks or, or less, maybe. Yeah, AI has been uh, in the opposite to our prior stock. They've been mentioned as uh, one of the three most overrated stocks. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, of course. Oh, yeah. that's not yeah. nice. That's not nice, but I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? It's just insane. Um, all right, excellent, guys. Let's stop here. Let's look at what's coming up for the rest of the week here in our our webinar. And by the way, guys, if you haven't taken a look at our education center yet in some parts of the websites, there have been a lot of upgrades done um, by IRT team. So definitely take a look at that. A lot of things have been upgraded and made easier to uh, to search for things and we're always improving stuff. So definitely take advantage of that. Take a look at the new education center um, and how clean those things are now. So uh, let's see what's coming up for the rest of this week. Yeah, absolutely. Big shout out to our education or to our technology team that works behind the scenes. Our, our, our unmentioned couple of people who rarely get any of the credit that they deserve. Um, if you have the opportunity, make sure you, uh, you shout them out, uh, you know, in, in there, they, they see this stuff. So, so, so let them know, but, um, they've done through some, some really great, um, work, um, Ryan and Lee in the back on, uh, read on some new, uh, imaging. Um, Carlos has done some new videoing the, the look and, uh, feel and the flow is so nice. So for, for all the members in here, this is, you know, some, uh, some maintenance and some new stuff for you guys to make it really cool. Um, so last night, um, I, I did my trade evaluation webinar. Thank you for everyone who came up. We had quite a showing last night, lots of people in the room. Um, if you weren't there, um, and you show up today and you mismanage your trade, well, there you go. You should have shown up. Uh, we did a whole thing on it. There was plenty of time. It is recorded. So I will have the recording up in a little bit. Um, so, uh, so just, uh, keep an eye on that. If you missed it, I know some of you aren't in, uh, aren't in our time zone, so it makes it a little bit more. I'm not talking to you. I'm just kidding. Um, next week we have a, uh, morning brother. Next week we have a strategy and, uh, trade book webinars. We have trade management part two, um, defining stop loss levels and how to avoid averaging down. This is from the boss, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Dr. Andrew Aziz. Um, he is going to be going through his trade book and strategies and helping you to explain how he uses stop and where his stop loss levels are at next week. Um, our own, our own Paris is going to be doing another tape, uh, webinar, which if you guys don't know, Paris has really made himself a niche as being one of the more solid tape readers that I know. Um, and, and, and I know quite a few and he's really stinking good at it. His, uh, you know, trading terminal.com features, um, his tape reading, um, segment, which is really great. Um, if you're in, not a BBT member, you can actually still access that there. He's going to be doing scalping, utilizing the tape. So he's going to be start talking about, um, concise and precisely timed entries and trades, um, based upon using the tape as entry mechanism going to be really cool. Um, next, uh, we have tonight right? March 15th. Yep. We have tonight, we have our psychology webinar by our own Michael Bear. Um, and if you, you want market from the markets, then show yourself the money. I keep saying Jerry Maguire's flashing through my head right now. I really hope there's a show me the money segment in there. If not, you, you guys have been robbed, so you better bring it, Brad, uh, bring it, Mike. So we'll see what happens. Um, but he's going to go through and, and really help you dial in, um, you know, dealing with the biggest inhibitor to making the money you want. Um, who, who's you? Uh, so it'll, it'll be really cool to check that out. Next week's psychology webinar is Rand Howe. Great speaker. Can't wait to hear um, your hidden beliefs about money sabotage, your, your trading mindset. Uh, it's going to be really, really cool talking about your self-limiting beliefs about money and how that holds you back. It's going to be really cool stuff. On, uh, on our Thursdays, we run mentoring. Um, so we have mentorship with John at 11, but basically all day, every Thursday. Um, I like to call it Thor's Day. But all day, every Thursday uh, is uh, is mentoring from start to finish. So um, John is at 11. I'm also at one o'clock. Um, but, you know, um, we, we have many other moderators throughout the day that are constantly um, doing it all day. And then 8 p.m. Eastern, we all hang out. We have a really good time and we just talk trading for an hour or so. So anyone who's a, who's a member can come by and check that out. Uh, lastly, um, I mentioned tradingterminal.com. Uh, this is where you can get courses, but basically this is the trader's tool belt right here, getting ready for you. Your one-stop shop for basically everything you could need. And there's more coming, including, uh, 
uh, some some chart logging and other stuff like that. You've got a free trading simulator out of here if you don't want to if you want to get started on the market. Um, all of the news that I've been uh, presenting today and talking about, I've been pulling and referencing out of TradingTerminal.com. Heat maps, calendars. I mean, every uh, scanners. I mean, it's crazy. All of this stuff here just for you, easy to access. So come by and check it out. Lastly, um, if you are enjoying uh, your pre-market show this morning, this pre-market show is provided by Bear Bull Traders. Bear Bull Traders is, in my humble opinion, uh, the best uh, trading community you could possibly find out there. Um, we've got options. We've got uh, stocks and ETFs. We've got futures traders. Um, we're a very inclusive community that really combines all of our efforts where most try and keep you away and say, hey, don't talk to each other. We try and find you a trading buddy. We try and get you to interact with each other. If you want to come see what the hype's all about, then come by. You can get in here for free for a week. You can get access to Carlos and his, uh, his live onboarding session, help you configure your platform, learn about the different courses and how to go through it. If you're ready to take the plunge, you can get in with the basic, 99 bucks a month. That gets things rocking. Elites, 200 a month. That gets you everything, including weekly webinars and, and uh, mentorships. Um, and then elite annual full access gets you that as well as um, some psychology coaching. Um, and that also comes with a very large discount since you're going to be signing up for the annual with full year. You actually save 50% on that one. So for anyone who's looking in there and you're looking to take this seriously, um, that's, that's going to save you some real money right there. All right. Thank you very much, Thor. Uh, we got a good question here in the YouTube chat. You know, what is considered a, a for, for day trading, a small account, large account or, or medium account as far as uh, 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 money? Uh, it, it depends, man, uh, how much equity, uh, not equity, but how much um, how much your account is. Uh, I think there is such a thing as too too much of a large account when it comes to trading. You can only buy so many shares when you're trying to get a momentum move. Um, it becomes too much that you actually start affecting the price and getting yourself a bad, bad uh, entry. So there is such a thing as, okay, this account is way too large for day trading. Swing trading is a whole different yeah, actually, story. Many of us actually yeah. sweep our account every month. So we'll keep our day trading account at like, you know, at like 40 grand or 50 grand. Cause we really don't that with margin, we don't need much more. Um, and then, you know, you take your earnings that you're taking, you actually sweep that into a different account to protect some of that's just for capital preservation. You know, you never yeah, know when your yeah. platform's going to get locked out. You're going to have a bad issue. Some big trade's going to come in and get locked out. You know, DOS has an issue. You know, you don't you don't yeah, want to blow yeah. your whole account out. So so this can actually be a risk management method as well. And, and it also depends the way you trade. Like I've seen people that uh, will consider a, you know, a $50,000 account, a small account, because maybe they're trading really high price tickers. So their buying power gets eat, eat, eaten up very quickly. Uh, for the most part, we're trading tickers between, well, I tried to not trade anything on $10, but between $10 all the way up to $250, $300. You could find probably 90% of my trades fall within that. I'm not trading anything mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, $2,000 ticker where, you know, mm -hmm. if you have a $15,000 account, $2,000 goes very, very quickly if that's the average that you're trading. But when you're yeah, doing the spreads between, on those stocks make yeah. them very difficult day trading vehicles. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know. Like Amazon. Remember, guys, remember, guys remember Amazon? Um, You know, it's, you have fifty thousand dollars. You would have bought hundred shares. You would have been done. <laughs> You're maxed out on your buying power. So, um, so yeah. So it all depends on your style of trading. But I think that um, you don't want to have anything smaller, obviously, than twenty five thousand because you have a PTD issue. But but if you are trading offshore with like a CMIC or anything else like that, I think five thousand is like okay, the bare minimum. Yeah. That you should. Yeah, be I mean, it's like, and if you're playing, if you're trading futures or something like that, even you don't, you know, you can five or ten grand, you can easily, you know, grab futures contracts and and do really good. And they're not even subject to PDT, so you can yeah, do that from yeah. anywhere. I think the most important but, thing, that, that regardless of your size of the account, is you know have your expectations set correctly. So if you're trading, you know, a five thousand dollar account with, with like CMIC or something, you know, don't expect to be returning, you know, five hundred dollars a day. You know, it's just not going to happen. If you're returning fifty dollars a day on an account that's you know five thousand that is amazing so just have your expectations set correctly on what the return is going to be um all right excellent let's take a look here let's start with um we have citigroup we have jp morgan oh they're bouncing back a little bit now we have baba tesla and amd we'll do levels for this and then we'll come back and see what else is moving uh, on here guys so let's start with um uh citigroup citigroup right now we have a big big drop on these guys down four percent the low of the pre-market on this is going to be 4480 
So we will slam a level there. And then below that, one thing, have. Carlos, on this yeah. um, Bank of America and yeah. City, their charts look exactly the same on the intraday right now. So whoever, whoever's, whatever is going on right now is extremely correlative. This bounce that they both had right off of this low range. Exactly the same. I yeah. mean, the, the chart yeah. looks exactly the same. Yeah. This is why I, <laughs> so I just kinda... keep this in mind, people. These are trading yeah. basically in tandem. So we, that, you know, that means there's a lot of algo play going on on these because it's really hard yeah. to get two stocks to turn and look exactly like that at the exact same time and have it be random participation. No, <laughs> absolutely. Man. Even JP Morgan to an extent, very similar, but... I agree. <laughs> Bank of America. Yeah, I mean, City it's like Group. the same chart. If the, if, if, the, can, if yeah. the letter wasn't there, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Language. Just add it. Just the add a BAC here, different. and you're good to go. There you go. It's exactly the same. So, um, yeah, uh, that's why I have Bank of America as a secondary and Citigroup Group on the main because they're pretty much the same. Who has more volume? Actually, Bank of America has a lot more volume. We're gonna so. we're gonna get a real yeah. nice bounce on these at some point, man. I mean, these you're, yeah, you're talking. I think these so, are man. these are not stocks that are going anywhere. I don't think anyone's really worried about BOC, BAC or a Citibank or a JPM, right. right? The the big American banks, they know the backings there. So I think I think in this instance, I think people are just letting them shake out the weak hands and they're letting it get into as low of a spot possible to buy it. As soon as it bottoms and makes new highs, the volume will come in on it, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's going to be a I don't know if that happens today or that happens next week, you know, or a month from now. I don't I don't know when that bottom happens, but it, it you know, I, I just don't see these as being like some big concern um, in that longer term. But we're lower than we've been in a long time. So if I was looking yeah. to buy, th this would actually kind of be the spot. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Somewhere down in here. Yeah, I like I like Bank of America actually. They have more volume. Uh, West Fargo is a higher price, which I I tend to like better higher price stocks in that 38 40 50. Uh, but I got to say Bank of America does seem a little bit more fluid with their volume this morning, so I'm going to keep an eye on that one. All right, so Bank of America 2745 low of the pre-market, high of the pre-market 2917, and then we're surrounded by the highs and lows of the last two trading days. Now, towards the bottom here below 2745, let's go ahead and take a look here. Oh man, this is 52 week low. We haven't been here. You're you're right, man. In a very very long time. We're going back to 2020 uh, time frame here. So uh, yeah, last time we we're hanging out here was uh, 2020 November December. We have a level here 2706. Another one here over at 2658. So I got two levels below there on Bank of America, which is you know we'll be ready to see what happens. But for the most part. This is 52 week low. We're getting into a very extended area as the daily goes. And look at the increase in volume on Bank of America. Someone mentioned on YouTube that Bank of America has been trading well the last couple of days. It sure has. Look at this volume. You see that type of volume, you're going to be trading very, very well. Um, here is JP Morgan. Same thing, right? You got a nice volume over the last couple of days. They also have a great pre market activity. Uh, love the pre market. It's pretty much the low from two trading days ago. So that's noted there. And then below that, we do have 127. Uh, 91 there as well towards the top highs and lows previous day close i think you're pretty much set here uh on this one um yeah can i finish on city group absolutely let's finish city group so um as far as levels 48 44 80 right we have that there towards the top guys highs and lows of the last two trading days previous day close you're set there um i'm gonna go to the left what's the actually city group has been down here recently not bank of america but Citigroup has just been was here just uh in december january so not so long ago uh 43.98 good level there and we definitely want to have this week here nice area of support at 42.90 um so plenty of levels there for Citigroup. i like where the price action is now you're actually sitting on a level so i'm going to mark that if you look at Citigroup, uh this is going to be 45.42 We'll slam a level there. That also seems to get a lot of activity, a lot of attention in the last couple of, of weeks. So uh, you want to have that down as well. Um, all right, so that's it there. Let's take a look at uh, JP Morgan. We're set. Baba. Uh, I like Baba today. I like the level we're sitting on on the daily, uh, 81.48. Low of the day here on low of the pre-market, 81.17. So we will put a level there. And then towards the bottom, which is where I, I would like this to go if we can get a move on it, uh, AD07 is a good level as well. So we're set there uh, on BABA. Again, I might move this one out of the way. It's it's a good possible um, right now. Well, we'll see if, they can, if it can get better as the market continues here in the pre-market. Uh, Tesla, of course, one of our buddies is going to be our usual suspect on deck. High of the pre-market for Tesla, 185.65. 
Uh, so we will slam a level there. Price action right now sitting, I mean, this level cannot get any better. 179.17. Uh, look how great that daily that uh, uh, pre-market level is there our lower pre-market a little bit lower but that's being marked by the low of yesterday and the highs of two days ago so you're pretty good there and then i'm going to mark down this 173 just in case we do flush that's the next daily level that i see that looks uh, somewhat interesting um and there yeah you said there on tesla very good pre-market activity tons of volume 5.1 million shares traded. Now, here's AMD. AMD was good to us yesterday. Let's see if that can continue. Um, I like the volume this morning. Pre-market bouncing really nicely of 84.90 uh, right now. So that is good. Uh, then towards the top, we do have the highs of the last uh, trading day yesterday and also the previous day close. So um, I like this one. Uh, we'll see if we can get any good trading uh, out of it today. The price action is sitting at a good area now. This 86.19. If you look to the left here on your daily, you do have uh, a nice area up here. Some days opening and closing right around here. So that's good for uh, AMD there. And that's what we're seeing this morning in the pre-market. We're kind of flirting with that area there. Um, okay, that covers it, guys. And we got tons. There's tons of possible stuff we could look at. Meta, we got more banking, the West Fargo, Citigroup. Uh, we have plug in here, uh, American Airlines, NVIDIA. There's just a ton. Someone asked me to do levels on NVIDIA. Let's do that. Uh, let's take care of this for you guys. So love the pre-market 235.12. And the levels are going to be easy on this thing because you're surrounded between the highs and lows of the last two trading days. So it's not a whole lot you're going to be marking down on this. Um, I will mark down where the price action is kind of flirting with now. This 236.69. All right. You don't have a lot going on here besides these two days, the opening and closing here. But for some reason, they're liking that level this morning. So let's mark it down and have it ready as a potential place of support and resistance. All right, um, here is the list, guys. Let me bring this over from our moderators. Um, as I do this, guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up over on YouTube. We appreciate it very, very much. It does help out the channel a ton as Andrew gets ready to trade live from uh, Dubai uh, before his travel day today, which is like 15 insane hours on a plane. Um, wish him all the best. Let's go ahead and, and get these uh, moderators lists over here. All right, here we go. Let's take a look here. All right, excellent. Bring bring you guys the visuals. Uh, oops, there we go. All right, excellent. Uh, yeah, fly, oh, fly will be tomorrow, 16 hours to Seattle. Okay, so it's tomorrow. So we'll have them trading with us today. Man. Yeah, a little long flight. As, no big deal. Long as I've been in six hours to California and Vancouver, I can only imagine 10 more of that. Yeah, I, I basically <laughs> I went to San Diego um, and it was the same thing. I, I had to go from Florida yeah. to North Carolina because that makes sense. And then yeah. from North Carolina to San Diego, um, I assume it was a long flight. However, the drama being, I mean, I just yeah. I don't even well, remember any of it. Puppet Master, yeah, he's just confirmed he's going to go on the Emirates suite, and that's probably the only way to do that uh, uh, successfully. <laughs> All right, so excellent, guys. Look at the list this morning. We have Megan. She's looking at Tesla, JD, the Spy, Susan, AMD, Meta, and the overall market. Maybe Netflix today. Thor, you you got Tesla, Apple, Bank of America, JD, and your 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 overall market stuff here, plus the Pivot Alert bot. Uh, Amen, potential long today. Apple, potential short. GME. And uh, uh, our, our man here is going to be looking at a TQQQ, NVIDIA, TNA, and Tesla for Andrew this morning. Um, and so, yeah, it looks like it's going to be setting up for a very volatile open. Um, that should create some really good opportunities for us. All right, guys, over on YouTube, we're going to continue here on our chat room. Um, Andrew's going to be trading live next. Take care, guys. Trade safe. Be very, very careful out there and be mindful of uh of the volatility especially on these national banks guys they're still very very aggressive look at look at fs frc this is the crap i'm sorry this is the stuff you want to stay away from i want to be nice today but, but look at this 38 to 26 who's trading this stuff i mean guys be very very careful just please be very careful stick to the stuff that trades well that you can build consistency on i guarantee you somebody here got happy and it's probably burning up their account right now so please just be very careful man look at this drop 25 percent unreal take care guys trade safe we'll see you tomorrow 8 30 a.m for uh pre-market prep have a great great day